The shadow didn't speak. Get away from me. Nothing happened. I said, go away. Nothing. Toby gritted his teeth as he paced back and forth, rubbing his hands hard through his hair. Okay, there was a shadow following him that wasn't his own shadow. How could this be happening? This was too freaking weird. He stopped again, leaning onto the dresser with his hands, and he peered into the mirror. Every time he saw the darkness behind him, a chill ran down his entire entire body, uh, making him shiver. Did his back feel heavier than usual? Toby was pretty sure it was because that thing was attached to him. What should he do? Well, he knew what he should do. He needed to get it off of him. But how could he make it go away? I can do this, he murmured. I can get it off of me. There has to be a way. Think. He bit his bottom lip and glanced at his wall in the reflection of the mirror, staring at it for a moment. He pushed away from the dresser and rubbed his chin as he studied the wall. Abruptly, he turned his back to the wall, sucked in a breath, then blew it out. Then he sucked in another breath and exhaled again. Squeezing his eyes shut, he ran backward and slammed it against the bare wall. He'd knocked the wind from his mouth. His entire body vibrated. He lunged forward and then slammed hard, uh, slammed back hard against the wall again and again. Pain radiated uh, down his spine as he fell to the floor, wincing. A sheen of sweat sprang across his forehead as he crawled to the dresser, his back throbbing. He reached up and pulled himself to his feet, staring into the mirror. The shadow still lurked behind him. Uh, behind him, he threw himself helplessly onto his bed and screamed into his pillow. Nervous and bruised, Toby dressed, avoiding the mirror. He left his room and went to the kitchen. The feeling that someone was, uh, was at his back wouldn't go away. It was like he was being watched. He felt stalked, trapped. There was a pile of dishes in the sink and the scent of burnt bacon and eggs. Whose turn was it to do the dishes? Probably his, but he didn't care. Toby turned and stepped into the front room. His dad was in shorts and a t-shirt, kicked back in his recliner, blurry-eyed and drinking coffee. Toby swallowed hard and cracked his knuckles. Hey, Dad. Dad grunted and looked over at Toby. Morning, Tobes. Morning. Toby's hands were shaking. He fisted them into a tight grip. Um, Dad, you see anything different about me? His dad squinted at him, looking up and down. Look the same to me. You do something different? He scratched at the scruff on his chin as he studied him. You finally growing some hair above your lip? Toby shook his head right away. No, just asking if you could see anything out of the ordinary. Something that's not supposed to be there? Just then, Connor strolled in. Don't worry, Tobes. You're still the same loser. Nothing's changed. Shut up, Connor, he said. But without his usual heat. Connor reached out and rubbed Toby's head. Toby shoved him away. Neither of you see my shadow? Toby asked them. Really? Connor made a face. What are you talking about, idiot? He stretched his arms out. A shadow, idiot. Do you see it or not? Can't you answer a simple question? Connor looked around Toby, shaking his head as he walked to the kitchen. You got problems, Tobes. Toby rounded on his dad, who just ignored him and continued to watch sports. How could they not see that there was this weird darkness following him around? Was he still dreaming? No, he was definitely wide awake. His back was still hurting from slamming against the wall. Was he the only one who could see it? Did that make him crazy? Had Connor finally driven him nuts? He went to his dad, leaned toward him. Dad, feel my head. Dad smelled of coffee and cigarettes. His eyes were a little bloodshot. Dad sighed. Tobes, what's the matter with you? He put his hand on his forehead. No, you're good, son. So don't get any ideas about skipping school, alright? Then I start getting a bunch of calls and texts from the school while I'm trying to sleep before my shift. Toby straightened. I'm not. The phone rang. Connor answered. Yeah? Yeah, hold on. Hey, idiot, it's for you. Work. Toby's gut flipped. Oh, no, 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 no. He walked over to the corner as he snickered at him. Toby snatched the phone away from him. Yeah. Hello? Toby, it's Dan. Can you come to work? I need to talk to you about something. Very important. Toby scratched his neck. Um, yeah, sure. All right, see you soon. I don't want to restart my updates. <laughs>
uh, or, or whatever that said. Um, sorry. Um, Connor widened his eyes. Ooh, Toes is in trouble. What did you do now? Toby schooled his expression to innocence, which was kind of hard. Nothing. Connor shook his head. Dan never calls um, employees unless they mess up royally. What did you do? Forget to lock up something? Or you broke something and didn't tell him? Toby narrowed his eyes at his brother. Did he know something? I didn't mess up. Uh, he's probably calling me in to tell me what a fantastic job I've been doing. So much better than you ever did. Yeah, right. I do everything better than you. Even that stupid job. Holy cow! Dad yelled from the front room. Base is loaded, babes, baby. <laughs> Boys, get in here. This game is getting good. Connor lost interest in Toby and strode into the front room, joining Dad. What I tell you? They got this game easy. I always pick the winning team, right, Dad? Dad laughed. You do, son. You do. Toby rolled his eyes and walked back to his room. He realised he wasn't hungry at all. He really couldn't argue with his brother about him doing a better job at Freddy's at the moment. He'd messed up royally by breaking hide-and-seek. He didn't know what was going to happen when he talked to Dan. He looked into the mirror, and the shadow lurked behind him like a dark ghost that wouldn't leave him alone. He shuddered. He looked at his hands, still shaking. This whole thing was freaking him out. Toby slapped a beanie on his head and took a deep breath in an attempt to cal calm his nerves. He had to face Dan about hide-and-seek. Then he'd figure out what to do about the shadow. Dan lifted his beefy arm to encompass the entire disaster area of hide-and-seek. Can you believe it? I just opened this game and now it's destroyed. Dan was built like a bull, all big-chested with meaty arms, but with short, skinny legs. He was an okay boss and was always cool to Toby. That was why Toby felt pretty bad for messing up his game. Toby stared at the chaos of the room with wide eyes. The game looked even worse than he remembered. The screen was dead now. Dan must have shut it down. Nearly all the cutouts were torn from the wall. Only pegs were left sticking out as placeholders. Most of the cutouts were broken. Some split totally in half. There were a few dents in the walls. Um, sorry. Ah, uh, <laughs> I, I can't believe it, Toby said, cracking his knuckles. He couldn't believe he'd done all of this damage by himself. Dan turned to Toby, eyeing him with intensity. Do you have any idea who did this? Toby shook his head as guilt weighed heavy on his conscience. No, Dan. I don't know who could have done this. Definitely not me. Uh, you didn't see any swans suspicious messing around last night. You checked the bathroom stools, right? The play area? No one was hiding anywhere after closing? Yeah, I did the routine check like you always tell me. No, I didn't see anyone suspicious. Dan ran a ha hand down his thick beard. Really ticks me off, you know. I put good money into this place for people to enjoy and this is how I'm repaid? Ticks me off. Yeah, I bet. When I was a kid, they didn't have places like these. Kids played outdoors and just went and had a pizza. But I like the idea of families coming together to eat and play together, have a party. This place isn't much, but it's a dream of mine. So it really upsets me when something like this happens. Dan sighed. Well, I gotta get to the tech. I gotta get the technician in here and see what he can do. Thanks for coming in, Toby. Toby nodded. Let me help you clean up. Dan placed his hands on his hips. Sure, but I gotta keep all the parts for insurance. The police already took pictures. Toby felt a clinch in his gut. The police? Yeah, I had to report this as a break-in and vandalism. They may need to ask you some questions. They're talking to everyone who worked last night. Toby swallowed hard and nodded. Sure, no problem. If you could pick up the big pieces and set them in a pile and sweep up the small stuff, that would be helpful. Sure. Thanks, Toby. You're a good kid. Dan stomped out of the game room, muttering something under his breath. Toby's shoulders slumped as he started to clean up the floor. He piled the, di uh, the big cutouts against one wall. When he picked up the cutouts of the bushes, he saw his beanie from last night. His heart skipped a beat as he looked behind him to see if anyone had come into the room. He quickly sw swiped it up and stuck it into his back pocket. Suddenly, his head jerked to the railing. The wooden blocks he'd made were still jammed inside. He picked up a long piece of broken wood and started to pry them out of the rail one by one. Heart pounding, he hurriedly picked up the three pieces from the floor, then stashed them in his sweatshirt. Then, taking a breath, he continued to clean up his mess. 
Toby felt awful the rest of the weekend. He mostly stayed in his room. He put an old sheet over his mirror. Even though he knew the shadow was still there, he didn't want to have to look at it. Every time he did, his pulse fluttered and he started to shake because it wasn't supposed to be there. It was like this scary, dark, hidden secret. He ate almost nothing on Sunday and barely slept. He didn't talk to his dad or his brother. Dad knocked on his door to check on him, but he told him he was just tired. He, ye he heard them yelling at some game on the television. Dad, Connor and Toby were pretty close, but Dad and Connor had their obsession with sports that they always shared. Dad with was either working a lot or sleeping, but when he wasn't, he was hanging out with Connor, watching sports and having a good old time. Since Toby wasn't that into sports, that didn't leave much for Dad and Toby time. Toby guessed he'd been closer to his mum, but he wasn't sure since she left one day when Toby was about five and Connor seven. He had a vague memory of Dad bringing them home from Connor's little league practice and mum just being gone. Dad had called for her and then Connor ran around the house looking for her. Dad had found a letter on the kitchen table. Connor asked what it was and wanted to know where mum was. But Dad just read the letter, then crumpled it in his hand and walked away. That night was the first of hundreds of frozen dinners together. No explanation to Toby and Connor was given about mum, so they just continued on with life as if mum had never been around. Maybe that was when Connor really started attempting to be the best at everything. Toby wasn't sure. His brother could have just been born with a screw loose. Toby skipped school on Mon oh, Mon <laughs> Monday. Toby skipped school on Monday, but he did decide to go to his shift at Freddy's that afternoon. He didn't know if he could pull that shift off. His energy was spent, his back felt tight and heavy, and all he wanted to do was lie down and go to sleep. He walked into Freddy's and Reggie met him in the arcade. He had a slice of pizza in his hand. Dude, you look gnarly. He chomped on his pizza. Toby just shrugged as he walked past him. Whoa, what's with the shadow? Looks intense. Toby's eyes widened as he whirled. He rushed to Reggie and grabbed the front of his shirt with both hands. You can see it? Take it easy. Uh, yeah. Your shadow is way dark, dude. He bit into his slice and chewed it in front of Toby's face. I can't get rid of it. It's freaking me out. Reggie lifted his eyebrows. I bet. How'd you get it anyway? Toby let him go and jerked his shoulder. Dunno. Just happened. A freak thing. I get it, man. It's personal. Reggie smoothed his shirt with his other hand. That really sucks, you gotta deal with it. Yeah, but you're the only one who said they've seen it. Reggie nodded, and his red curls moved with emotion. Totally see it. Do you see the ears? Reggie frowned. Huh? Toby shook his head. Never mind. How can you even see it? Reggie shrugged. People say I see things differently. Toby stared at him when he didn't er elaborate. Whatever. I think it's... Reggie took another bite of pizza. What? I think it's from a game I, uh cheated. Oh yeah, what game? Toby wasn't sure he could tr truly trust him. He was a regular at Freddy's and he could tell Dan whatever he told him. Doesn't matter, I just need to get rid of it. I can't keep walking around with this thing at my back, it's weird. Well if I were you, I'd try to get that thing off of me, like yesterday. Reggie sh shuddered. T looks totally creepy, dude. Just seeing Reggie's reaction made him shudder in return. Like, try what? I don't know how to make it go away. What do you think I should do? Dude, you're a gamer. Use your imagination. I've watched you for weeks attempt to beat your brother's score on nearly every game in this arcade. That takes fire, you know. Where's that fire now? Toby stiffened, cracked his knuckles. I got fire. Reggie nodded. Then go get it, bro. That night, Toby thought about what Reggie said, and he felt inspired. He wasn't defeated yet. He could beat the shadow and get him off. He could freaking win this game. He made a list. Ideas to remove shadow. Slam it off, didn't work. Scrub it off, drown it off, burn it off, forget that. Or cut it off, maybe. Oh god, another in the flesh. Um, Toby went into the garage. He searched around the clutter for the car wash scrubber on a stick. No one had washed their cars in forever, but Toby knew the scrubber was still around somewhere. It has thick br bristles that might scrub the shadow right off his back. It could totally work, maybe. He was pretty much willing to try anything to get this thing off of him. He kicked up boxes, making a path around the garage, uh, shoved the lawnmower and kicked a deflated football. 
Holy heck, he jumped when a little mouse skittered across the floor. He needed to remember to tell his dad to buy some mouse traps. He finally found the scrubber stuck in a corner with an old wash bucket. He grabbed the scrubber and tried to reach it over his back, but the stick was too long. He looked around and found a rusted saw in his dad's old toolbox. He leaned the stick on the washer with his left hand and started sawing away at the stick with his right. The blade was dull and it took a few minutes, but a part of the stick finally broke off, dropping to the floor. Toby lifted the scrubber in his hand and felt the bristles with his fingers. Yeah, nice and thick. You'll do. He tipped the brush onto his back and gave a rub. It would definitely work. Determined, he took off his shirt and laid it on the dryer. Then he took a breath, grabbed the stick with both hands and started scrubbing his back. Hard. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> oh god, this is weird. Uh, he scrubbed, wincing. The bristles bit into his skin. Scraping, scratching. See how you like that, he muttered. He scrubbed and, sc and he scrubbed at his back, feeling the skin peel away to rawness. Oh, Jesus hurts. He scrubbed till he felt like his back was burning and he couldn't take it anymore. Trembling, he dropped the scrubber and fell to his knees, sucking air through his teeth. His vision dimmed and he blinked. Please let this work, please, he whispered. Exhausted and in pain, he grabbed his shirt and carefully slid it over his head. Then he got to his feet and stumbled back into the house and to his room. Toby leaned against his dresser and slowly pulled off the sheet covering the mirror. He looked awful. His eyes were wild. His brown hair was stuck on his forehead with sweat. His face was pale and his skin looked dry. He lifted his gaze to look behind him. The shadow loomed at his back and it seemed to be bigger, even darker. It moved as Toby's shoulders heaved. No, he said. It hadn't worked. He may not have gotten the shadow off his back, but he apparently ticked it off. He could feel its anger, its darkness, more, intent or more intensely. Feeling the emotions was like being squeezed into too, too small a box, and the sighs were closing in, suffocating him. Toby pounded a fist on his dresser. I hate you, he said. I hate you. Then he felt himself falling, and everything went black. Toby jerked awake and hit his knee on something hard. Ow. Saliva drooled from his mouth, and he wiped it away with the black back of his hand. He heard knocking. He lifted his head and looked around. Clothes were littered around him. He was on the floor of his bedroom at the foot of his bed. He'd hit his knee on the dresser. He'd slept on the floor all night. More knocking on his door. Toby, get up. Dad said you have to go to school today. Connor bellowed through the door. All right, I'm up, he yelled, and settled his head back on the carpet. He heard his brother walk away. Toby slowly sat up, wincing. His head felt like it wanted to fall off. <laughs> His back burned as if on fire. He pushed himself to his feet and the room spun. Oh, dang. He grabbed on to the dresser to keep from falling again and waited for the room to stop spinning. Even though he wasn't hungry, he had to eat something to keep up his energy. He didn't care to look in the mirror. He knew the shadow was still there. He could feel its weight, could sense the darkness looming over him like a threat. Toby managed to shower first without uh, falling over, but the spray hurt too badly so he didn't let the water run from down his back. He brushed his teeth, ignoring the shadow as it followed along in the bathroom mirror. He dressed and walked into the kitchen. His brother sat at the table eating cereal, waffles and two bananas. Connor stopped mid-chew when he spotted Toby. You're really sick? Toby didn't care to answer. You look bad. What's the matter with you? Toby just shook his head as he got out his cereal and milk and then a bowl and spoon. Why aren't you talking, Tobes? He shrugged. Maybe you should stay home another day. Toby looked at his brother in surprise. Where are all the stupid remarks, all the put-downs? I'm going. When Toby finally answered, Connor seemed satisfied. All right, but if you got the flu, keep your distance. He wolfed down his cereal, waffles, and both bananas. He threw his dishes in the sink, gave a gnarly burp, and said, later. Then he walked out of the kitchen. A moment later, the front door slammed shut. Toby ate a few sp spoonfuls of cereal, but after a few minutes, he felt it coming right back up. He ran to the garbage and puked. His body shuddered with spasms. He managed to straighten with a hand to his stomach. If he didn't know better, the shadow seemed to be sucking the life out of him. The idea of something overpowering him annoyed the heck out of him. He clenched his fists. You are not going to win. 
Toby felt like a zombie at school. He walked the hall, slow and tired. Kids stared at him as he passed, then looked away. Toby stared back, not caring about anything. Teachers didn't care what he did anyway. He'd never been a star student. In fact, he just went through the motions of school. Dad never cared about his grades. He just wanted him to pass and graduate, so that's, so that's what Toby set out to do. He went to school, did the homework he could, skipped the assignments that couldn't make any sense, and he got passing grades. Sometimes, barely passing, but credits were credits. When Toby came in as a freshman, and the teachers discovered he was Connor Billings' little brother, they'd smiled big and asked him questions. Connor was so confident, so conversational, great at sports. He did his best at schoolwork and extracurriculars. A real go-getter. Little brother Toby had to be the same. It ran in the family, right? Wrong. They found out quickly, Toby wasn't very outgoing. He never really made friends or joined any clubs. He didn't care to try to, to try his best like Connor had. Uh, Toby did what he had to do to walk the line up to his senior year. Soon the teachers had stopped being friendly and started getting annoyed. He'd get looks of disapproval, uh, and most of all, he got the looks of disinterest and dismissal, like he didn't matter to them. Well, newsflash, the feeling was mutual. Toby detoured to the restroom before he ambled to his locker. There was a kid with headphones on messing with his hair in the mirror. He was bopping up and down. Toby used the restroom, and when he turned around to wash his hands, um, the kid froze, staring into the mirror. His mouth hung open in shock. The kid pointed to Toby or more likely to the shadow behind him. Dang it, he must be able to see the shadow in the mirror too. Toby cracked his knuckles. Hey look. The kid spun around to look at Toby, frowned, then looked back in the mirror. Before Toby could say more, the kid booked it out of the bathroom as if he was running from a fire, or more like a monster from a horror movie. Okay, later. Toby muttered as he washed his hands. Toby had gym class for the first period, which he realised was perfect for his next step in his plan. Today his class was scheduled to play basketball. Mr. Dillon Hall, a tall, bald man in a bright tracksuit, blew his whistle. He cocked his hip and leaned his clipboard against it, the, his big stomach. All right, line up for roll call. Toby, dressed in shorts and a t-shirt, lined up with the other kids. He'd been careful to stay away from any mirrors in the locker room. He just hoped he didn't see that scared kid again. That was all, wait, oh yeah, that was all he needed for a weird rumour to start going around school. A girl walked up and handed Mr. Dylan Hall a note. What now? Din Mr. Dylan Hall muttered, then skimmed the note. Fine, go have a seat. He rolled his eyes dramatically before getting to roll cool. Billings? Toby raised his hand when Dylan Hall looked up from his chart. Oh, right. Oh, okay. For goodness sake, let's put some effort in today, Billings. Come on, kid. Uh, Toby just crossed his arms as Mr. Dylan Hall continued taking attendance, occasionally making snide remarks to the other kids. Dylan Hall's such a jerk, uh, murmured Tabitha Bing. Kids called her Tab for short. Toby glanced at her, then turned away. She was sort of an outcast and liked to rebel against the system. She had a nose piercing and wore a lot of black. Occasionally, she started petitions to get things changed around the school. She'd attempted to run for student body president a couple of times, but she'd lost to popular kids. She was always blowing little things out of proportion, in Toby's opinion. Since she, she, since, eh, since she seemed to be the total opposite of Toby, he usually steered clear of her. You don't talk much, do you, Billings? He, she asked him. Toby turned to her and this time shrugged. Don't got much to say at school. She lifted her eyebrows and smiled. Unlike me, you mean. You said it, not me. All right, Mr. Dinan Hall barked out. Let's break into your groups and play some basketball. I want to see some serious effort on the court. None of those, oh, my chest hurts or I twisted my ankle excuses people. I want real athletes on the court. Let's go. As the groups gathered and started their games, Toby checked out of his group to use the restroom. He left the gym, glancing over his shoulder. No one was around in the hallway. He detoured to the high school pool, which luckily was free for the period. The strong scent of chlorine filled his nostrils as he scanned his clear water. He couldn't pound the shadow off of him, nor could he scrub it off. 
Now it was time for more intense measures. Hope you can swim, he said out loud to the shadow, or not. He looked around for something heavy, but couldn't find anything in the pool area to weigh him down. He jogged to the weight room. There were some kids in there, lifting weights, but Toby managed to sneak in and grab a heavy weight vest. Back at the pool, he slipped it in onto his shoulders and buckled it at his chest. He bounced on the balls of his feet and felt the rest. Yeah, the vest was a good weight to sink him to the bottom and keep him there. He walked back to the pool and stared at the still water. He bit his bottom lip. Not that he'd admit to anyone, but he was a little scared. He could swim, but he wasn't used to holding his breath for a long time. He paced back and forth along the deep end of the pool. Come on, you can do this. What could go wrong? Nothing really. And hey, this could really work. You could be free of the shadow and get on with your life. He finally stopped pacing and stood in front of the pool. After taking a deep breath, he pinched his nose and jumped into the deep end. Toby slowly sank to the bottom of the pool. Even though the school claimed it was heated, the water still felt ice cold. Yeah, that, 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 <laughs> that's what it's like in schools. Uh, with the vest holding him down, he sat at the bottom and waited. He blinked, looking around the pool area. He could feel the chlorine sting his eyes. He wondered how long he could hold his breath, and he wondered if the shadow could hold its breath at all. Did shadows even breathe? He guessed he'd find out. This has to work, he thought. He couldn't live forever with this darkness at his back. Not only would it drive him crazy, but it would be a constant reminder that he was a failure, a loser. I will always win, and you will always lose like the loser you were born to be. No, he couldn't live like this forever. Too fast, it felt like his lungs were squeezing closed, so he pulled at the buckle to realize, uh, so to re release the vest. This was all the time he could manage holding his breath. Hopefully, it was enough to drown the shadow off of him. But when Toby pinched the release, the buckle wouldn't unlatch. He tried to press the buckle to detach it again, but it wouldn't let go. A surge of anxiety shot through him. Toby jerked at the buckle, trying to pull it apart. He had the urge to open his mouth to breathe. Panic clawed at him as adrenaline flooded his system. He pushed himself from the floor with his feet, but the, vet, the weight of the vest pulled him back down. He pushed up again, uh, paddling his arms, kicking his legs, trying to swim to the top. But he was too weak from not eating much the last couple of days. He sank back to the bottom, clawing at the vest. Oh no, somebody help me. Help! There was a splash in the pool above him. Someone, someone swam towards him. Toby couldn't fight it anymore. He opened his mouth and swallowed water as the person pulled him by his vest to the top. Toby kicked with his legs to help get the two of them to the top. He broke through the surface, gagging up water. Water and snot dripped from his nostrils. The person helped hook his arm onto the edge of the pool. He coughed and sucked in much needed air. His lungs burned his entire body shuddering with each breath. Toby opened his eyes to see a drenched Tabitha Bing in the pool beside him. She was hanging on uh, the side of the pool with one arm. His eyes stung, and he pressed his fingers into them. What the heck were you doing? She snapped at him. Toby pushed hair out of his eyes, breathing hard. You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Well, it better be a good enough reason for me not to report you to the principal, jerkwad. She pulled herself over to the top of the ledge. Water streamed from her soaked PE clothes. Toby tried to climb out as Tabitha pulled his vest, struggling to get him onto the platform. His body felt like dead weight between his drenched clothes and vest. With both of them playing, they managed to extract Toby from the pool. Toby rolled to his back and Tabitha fell to the platform beside him. For a skinny guy, you weigh a ton. She got to her feet and looked down at him. Water drops streamed down her arms and legs. Meet me at the soccer field at lunch or I'm going straight to the office to report you. Toby coughed. It's not really your business. I just saved your life. I'm making it my business. So which is it? Are you meeting me or am I going straight to the office? Toby lifted her hand and let it drop. Yeah, fine. I'll be there. I wasn't trying to hurt myself, Toby said grudgingly to Tabitha. They sat together on the soccer field bleachers during lunch break. It was a nice day, but a breeze kept pushing clouds over the sun every so often, making it a little cold. I hate those days. <laughs> Toby was still chilled from the pool experience, 
So he hustled inside his sweatshirt. Tabitha's hair was black and pulled away from her freckled face. Normally she wore makeup, but the pool water must have washed it all off. She was eating a sandwich that smelled like peanut butter. Then why the weighted vest? I was trying to stay down for as long as I could, but the buckle got stuck and I couldn't re release it or swim up fast enough. Toby cracked his knuckles. So, um, thanks for helping me out. Oh, you mean the saving your life thing? She waved her hand. All in a day's work. You're a pretty strong swimmer. My parents always said I was born to swim. I've been going to junior lifeguard camp forever. She shrugged. Why did you want to stay down at the bottom of the pool for so long anyway? Toby shook his head. How could he tell her he was trying to drown a shadow attached to the back, uh, attached to his back and that it hadn't worked? When he went in the locker room to change, he saw in the mirror that it was still there behind him, more intense and scarier than before. Here, have some of my lunch. You look like you need it, she said, handing him half of her sandwich. He put a hand to his gut. Nah, my stomach is upset. It's just some bread and peanut butter. Try it. Toby accepted the half sandwich and took a small bite. It was gooey in his mouth, but he was able to get it down. It seemed he could keep it down as well, he realised with relief. Why did you follow me? Toby asked her. She ducked her head and shrugged. You looked, I don't know, like you could use a friend. Toby didn't have anything to say to that. What does needing a friend look like? You wouldn't believe me if I told you, she said to him. What? That's what you said at the pool. You wouldn't believe me if I told you. What did you mean by that? Toby wasn't sure why, but he had the urge to throw caution to the wind and tell her everything. He wanted to tell someone because to keep all this all to himself stressed him out. Yeah, Reggie could actually see the shadow, but Toby hadn't wanted to tell Reggie everything. Maybe it was time to get it all off his chest. Staring down at her half sandwich, he started to tell Tabitha about hide and seek, how he cheated the game and broke it, how the shadow was now attached to him and how he couldn't seem to get rid of it. For some reason, he felt she could handle the bizarre truth, that she wouldn't run off and tell someone he was crazy. It was somewhat liberating to finally unload the entirety of this crazy secret to someone else. He felt himself exhale in relief. Who knew keeping in such a secret was so exhausting? That sounds completely and utterly terrifying, she said, and looked, at, and looked behind him. I can't see it. Toby nodded. I only see it in a mirror. For real? He nodded. Yeah. You believe me? It actually sounds too crazy to be made up. I know you believe it and that's all that matters to me. People deal with their own darkness in different shapes and forms. Okay, so she didn't completely believe him, but Toby understood. He couldn't even believe it, and he looked at it every day in the mirror. It was just a relief to get it all out and for her not to tell him he was crazy. And you thought you could drown it? How would that how did that work out for you? I'm just trying everything I can. It didn't work anyway. Have you told your mum or dad? It's just my dad. Tried to tell him and my brother, but they didn't understand what I was talking about. They couldn't see it either. But you've told me. And Toby sighed. I don't know why. She nodded. Sometimes it's easier to tell a stranger. I get it. So why did you cheat the game? Toby picked up the sandwich. Have you ever felt like you're never good at anything? Well, yeah, you can't be good at everything. No, he stared at her. Good at anything. At all. Like a total loser. She shook her head. No, and you're not a loser. His lips curved in a sarcastic smile. Right. Have you not seen the way the teachers look at me? Like Dylan Hall? I'm not worth their time. Look, life is what you make it. You can't think like that. I don't think like that. I feel it. It doesn't matter anyway. I wanted to win and I thought that the only way I could was by cheating. It was stupid. She didn't say anything to that and instead pulled a small circular mirror from her back. Okay, let's see it. Toby shook his head, scooting away from her. No way. She waved the mirror. Come on, why not? Because it's bad. Really bad. You don't even understand how bad. She stared at him. I can handle it. He stared at her with wide eyes. I can't even handle it. Okay, fine. You don't have to show me. She tipped the mirror back. So what are you going to do about it? Toby stared out at the soccer field, but he wasn't really seeing it. I'm going to beat it. What other choice do I have? They sat a few minutes in silence before Tabitha said, Let me see your phone. He glanced at her. Why? 